Abidjan is a city in the midst of upheaval, and our observers are the ones who witness these changes firsthand. We head off to meet them in Ivory Coast's economic capital. The Plateau Business District, nicknamed Little Manhattan. A fourth bridge is set to open this year, and soon, the first subway in sub-Saharan French-speaking Africa. Abidjan has been transformed. Abidjan is now a major regional megacity in a country with an annual growth rate of more than 7%. A new wealthy class is emerging today from the 4.5 million residents. But some people in the city remain overlooked. There are still significant human challenges. Our observers are witnessing this unique West African transformation firsthand. Philippe Cabea, an IT consultant, Yannick Kofi, a student, and Sule Manasanago, a teacher. For several years now, Sanogo has been telling us about the forced evictions carried out by authorities in order to demolish large shanty towns in the capital. On the 8th of January 2020, a 14-year-old boy was found dead in the undercarriage of a plane in Paris. He'd scaled this wall, which separates the airport from the poorer districts surrounding it. In response, on the 23rd of January, the Erol Canal housing estate was evicted in order to secure the area around the airport. This is a typical example of eviction. People aren't warned in advance. They're simply kicked out and the area is demolished. You can see the rubble here. That was done with a bulldozer. I can't stand the fact that people are not even told in advance. People come to evict them and they have no idea where to go. It's really upsetting. The authorities had had their sights set on the Echo Canal area for a long time, but locals say that they'd never received a formal eviction notice with a precise date. Some residents went to live with family members, but others are still living among the rubble. Liliane had built accommodation that she rented for the equivalent of 900 euros per month. Now, she has nothing. We've made this as a shelter. We don't know where to go. At night, we surround it with straw. We put up mosquito nets and lie beneath them. And how many of you are living here? Twelve of us sleep here. We don't want to stay here, but we don't have the money to go and live in the city, like other people. Eventually, the authorities want to clear a 200-meter area around the airport. On the other side, residents of the Adjufu neighborhood have been ordered to leave. This is the airport wall that the young boy is supposed to have climbed over. And just nearby, there's this neighborhood. There's even writing here that says, to be demolished, as of the 13th of January 2020. As a result, people who own homes here are dismantling their houses and gathering up whatever belongings they can. A homeowner lives here. We're going to try to speak with him. We've been forced to remove our roofs, doors and windows and sell them for a pittance so that we can eat. So here we are. We're waiting to hear what else the state will offer us. Everyone has the same story. When we visited one month after the eviction notice, the authorities had offered neither compensation nor rehousing. The people here are poor. Some tenants prefer to leave even if that means putting themselves in difficulty. They've built up unmanageable debt with their employers, taking out loans of up to 500,000 francs to rent houses that they would pay only 20,000 francs for here. This cook rented a house here for 32 years. Now he's constructed a makeshift shelter. You sleep so badly here because of the heat. Before, over there, I had a fan. I slept well, but I can't sleep here. They've cut the water and electricity, so we make do with water from the well. We put bleach in it when we drink it. The Minister of Transport, Amadou Kone, is in charge of the eviction operation. Can you tell us if the people will receive any compensation? There won't be any financial compensation. The people there know that it's not their land and know that they have to go.
Do you think that every time we try to save lives by evicting people who are living somewhere illegally, we should provide compensation? No compensation, but the minister confirms that a plan for rehousing has been announced. We decided to postpone the eviction until March, to give us time to find a site. This has now been done. But we've also been able to identify all those that have to leave and see how we can help them move. With the city's thirst for development, evictions are becoming ever more common. In November 2019, the Boribana shanty town was destroyed to make room to build the fourth bridge. There, too, residents were not given any warning. Is it a question of residents turning a deaf ear or not understanding? The geographer, Irene Casigiorgio, has a possible explanation. Residents of poor neighborhoods sometimes replicate their traditional way of life in the village in the city. This causes problems with the privatization of public space. In the villages, in our traditions, space is not private. It's shared by all. It's open to all. Even when residents receive an order to leave, it comes as a surprise to them. They can't afford to pay rent in a normal neighborhood so they stay until the last minute. Evictions are only partially effective. Sometimes, people who have been evicted come back to the site if it hasn't been developed yet, and so it starts a vicious circle. So it's not exactly the best way to restore urban order. Hi, Yannick. Hi. This is your university. You've finished your lectures for today. It's the end of the day, but you're not going home. No, I'm not going home because it's too far away. It's two hours away and it's expensive. So I stay here, like lots of my friends. Yannick is a student in natural sciences in Nongui Abrogua University. Like for hundreds of his classmates, it takes him a long time to get to campus. As a result, during the week, these students opt to spend the night on campus, in a strange kind of setup. When we stay here overnight, this is where we put our stuff. There are no bedrooms where we can put our things, so we have to leave them here. And do you manage to find your clothes and your notes for class? Sometimes it's complicated, but I manage. Abidjan has 120,000 students, but only 6,000 available spots in students' accommodation, so only 5% of students can benefit. All those who apply for accommodation and don't get it sleep on campus as best they can in buildings that aren't exactly equipped. As you can see, everywhere is flooded. There's water everywhere. The toilets are blocked, and these are the university's only toilets. Tonight, like many nights, it's really humid and the temperature hasn't dropped below 25 degrees. Yannick gets clean as best he can. So here's where I wash. I get myself wet and wash myself. Everyone who sleeps here does this because there's no shower. The university tolerates students spending the night on campus. There are only 6,000 beds currently available. In 2019, the higher education minister promised to make sure there were 10,000 or 11,000 places before the end of the year. In the end, only 80 more beds were provided. Fesky, one of the main student unions in Ivory Coast, is calling for concrete action from the state. Even existing university residences are in disrepair. When they're no longer livable, they're abandoned. The state has downed tools. Meanwhile, many students are forced to sleep anywhere they can. After studying in the amphitheater, when you're tired, you come to rest here. Some sleep outside, others stay in the amphitheater. We contacted the Ministry of Higher Education, who said that Abidjan is under a lot of pressure because it attracts students from all over the country who prefer to study here than in their own regions. The Ministry reiterated its promise to refurbish abandoned students' accommodation and to increase the number of places to 11,000 by the end of 2020.
This is the shore of the Laguna. We're in Kokodi. I love it here, especially in the morning. When you get here, you can take beautiful photos by the Laguna. You can see the city, and you can see little Manhattan from here. Philippe Kabaya is Congolese. In 2016, he left Kinshasa and moved to Abidjan, a city he fell in love with. For the last two years, he's run a Facebook page, paying tribute to the city through images. What we do on the I Love Abidjan page, above all, is to highlight the city's beauty and emphasize all the unique places. It gives you a different perspective, because when you live in a city, you forget to look at it in this way. We've taken photos of traffic jams, We've taken lots of evening photos, nighttime photos, photos on a rainy day. Philippe takes us to Plateau, the business district. There's something really magical here. It's this building which was built in 1973 and which was already ahead of its time. It's a city which is very much ahead of its time and more was well ahead of many other African cities. It's very bold. It's a shame that it's a bit abandoned now because it's a building you can't miss. I really like the pink side of the tower. With the light, it's really beautiful. All the towers are concentrated in one single area. Maybe that's why it's called Little Manhattan, because of the towers. I really like it. You don't find that in many African capitals, especially not the French French-speaking ones in any case. Abidjan is as sweet as they say. Artists, activists, entrepreneurs. On the I Love Abidjan page, Philippe also pays tribute to those who make an impact in the city. His latest discovery is Dozo, a fashion brand opened by an Ivorian man who studied business in France. For me, this store represents the spirit of young Ivorian people. It's about modernity and bold creations. We stay modern while retaining an Ivorian identity. All the creations, from Cori to metal, it's African chic. I think that Ivorians and other Africans too should learn to love this city more because it's magical, but you have to see it. It's the end of this edition of the Observers Direct in Abidjan. Thanks to our observers for showing us their city and what matters to them. All of our contact details are on the screen. See you soon.